Now I want to define the trig functions for any angle, not just small angles, but any angle. And the way I do this is I first of all, whatever angle I want, I want to look at, I put it in standard position. So I've got the vertex at the origin, the initial ray in the direction of the positive x-axis, and the terminal ray wherever it ends up. I'm choosing to um, put this one here in the first quadrant just to, for my first example. And we'll see how it relates to what we've already done. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to pick a point, any point on the terminal ray. Now I say any point, not any point, because if you take the vertex, that is on the terminal ray, but it's not really useful to us. So anything other than the vertex, pick that point. Okay. That point has coordinates. All right. Um, it's got an x coordinate and it's got a y coordinate. Now those coordinates are more than just numbers, or they tell you something, right? Because the x-coordinate is telling you how far away from the y-axis you are. The y-coordinate is telling you how far away from the x-axis. So if I take a, a line from that point, drop it straight down to the x-axis, and please make sure you do this to the x-axis. Um, we'll see why in, in a bit, but drop that to the x-axis. Then I've just, I've got a, a right triangle in there, right? The right triangle where this side right here is the x-coordinate. That the length of this side is the x-coordinate of that point. Likewise, the length of this vertical side is the y-coordinate of that point. So you can think of x and y as coordinates, or you can think of them as edges of, you know, lengths of edges of a triangle. Well, this triangle has another edge, and we'll call that length r, r for radius essentially, and there's a relationship between x, y, and r. And so we can figure out that r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. This is the Pythagorean theorem, right? Now, I want to point out that you could say, well, it's plus or minus the square root. But for the time being, I want to take r as always positive. Later on in the quarter, when we get to polar coordinates, um, we may take r negative. But for now, r will always be taken as positive. x squared plus y squared, take the square root. That's r. Now, from what we've already done, you can probably tell me what you want for definitions for the six trig functions. What is the sine of theta? Well, if these new definitions are going to correspond with your old definitions, then the sine of theta had better be the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, which in this case is the y-coordinate divided by r. And the cosine of theta, again, if it's going to coincide with what we've already done, cosine of theta should be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that looks like x divided by r. The tangent of theta is the opposite over adjacent, so y divided by x. The cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of that, so x divided by y. The secant of theta is um, reciprocal of the cosine, it's the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side, so r divided by x. And lastly, the cosecant of theta is the hypotenuse divided by the opposite side, so that's r divided by y. Okay. Are these new definitions? Well, not really. If the angle is a first quadrant angle, this looks very much like a, you know, the right triangle we had before, and the relationships are the same. The thing that's interesting though, the thing that really makes it work for us now, is that if that angle is not a first quadrant angle, if that angle is, you know, off in some other quadrant, so let's say that this is the angle theta, still if you take a point and you've got the x and y coordinates, if I drop a perpendicular down to the x-axis, this length along the x-axis is the x-coordinate, this vertical length here is the y-coordinate, and what we have is another right triangle. Now the angle's on the outside of it, but I'm looking at this, this triangle here with this little angle. This triangle is called the reference triangle, and this little angle on the inside here, the angle between the terminal ray and the x-axis, sort of the smallest possible angle there, that's what's called the reference angle. Reference, reference, angle. The reference angle and the reference triangle. All of these definitions are the same. What is the sine of that angle? Well, it's this y-coordinate over r. What is 
the cosine of this angle, it's this x coordinate over r. Notice in this case, if this is a second quadrant angle, that x coordinate is going to be negative. So when you look at the cosine of this angle, the second quadrant angle, x will be negative, r will be positive. This will turn out to be a negative number. We didn't see negative numbers when we had all small angles, but now that we're going for bigger angles, it's going to turn out that these trig functions might be positive, might be negative, and that depends on whether your x and y coordinates are positive or negative. Okay, So here with this angle in the second quadrant, um, the y coordinate is still positive, the x coordinate is negative. So I look at these things, y over r, so in the second quadrant, y over r is still positive over positive, that's a positive value. Cosine x over r is negative because x is negative, r is positive. Tangent the y is positive, the x is negative, so that's uh, a negative output. Cotangent, x over y, again, that's negative because I got a, a negative x and a positive y. Secant would be negative because r is positive and x is negative over here. And cosecant would be positive, r is positive, y is positive. Okay. So in the second quadrant, you had some positives and some negatives, but it really depends on whether x or y is positive or negative, and in this case, x is negative. Notice that this reference triangle and reference angle are very nice. If you've dropped your perpendicular to the x-axis, let me repeat that, to the x-axis, okay, then the y-coordinate in that reference triangle, the y-coordinate is always playing the role of the opposite side to the reference angle. The x-coordinate is playing the role of the adjacent side. So when I look at y over r, I'm thinking opposite over hypotenuse x over r is adjacent over hypotenuse. The x-coordinate is always playing the role of the adjacent side. This is if you drop your perpendicular to the x-axis. If you drop it to the y-axis, then x and y swap roles and we don't even want to go there. Okay, Drop it to the x-axis. We'll look at some examples in the next video.